and we're awake. Good morning, another day, another vlog. <laughs> I'll take you guys along with me, show you exactly what I eat in the morning. So I'm trying to wake up earlier lately. Um, it's been about 6.30, 7 o'clock, but I'm going to sleep around midnight, so it still feels a bit rough. Trying to adjust, it's a good start. Uh, you guys should start waking up early, you get so much done. I know some people who wake up at like 1, 2 o'clock and the whole day is gone. The morning is your productive time, make the most of it. So this morning I'm having French toast, and what I usually like to do is have two eggs and three egg whites. So five eggs in total, but that way you don't get too much cholesterol because if you're having five whole eggs every single day, it's a lot of cholesterol and that is terrible for your health. Apparently in five years it might be great for your health, but I'd rather stay on the safe side. So two egg whites, three eggs. So what we're gonna do is normal egg cracks, the eggs in. So that's one, that's two. And then what you're gonna do for egg whites, simple. So you wanna just crack it like normal. Split it in the middle, catch that egg in one of the side, and then you want to just basically keep passing that yolk between the two shells. And while you do that, the rest of the egg is going to fall nicely into the bowl. And then you just want to put that in the bin. Do that twice more. Pink salt, black pepper. Use pink salt because it's just got more minerals. And if you're going to use salt, might as well be healthy about it. Yeah. Okay, salt. And I'll whisk it. Then all you want to do is wholemeal bread. Just dip the bread in, dip it in both sides so it's covered. Warm up the pan. Spray some oil. Now I don't really like this one. I usually use the uh, fry light, which is one cow per spray. But this is all we had at home, so I'm going to be using this till it runs out. So quick fun fact: Why do we eat brown bread? So Brown bread's a complex carb, so it digests slowly throughout the day, so the energy gets used as you need it, basically. If you have white bread, it's a simple carb, and the difference between a simple and a complex carb is that simple carbs get digested quickly, and if you're not doing much, or you have a desk job, for example, like a lot of us, then it gets stored into fat, and that's not what we want. So, stick to brown, it's a safe bet, and I prefer the taste of brown, a lot of people do. That will only take about 10, 15 minutes when you start getting quicker. Who, who said it's too hard to cook? So today we're gonna to be talking about programming and why I believe that each one of you should get started straight away. The first reason why I think you should learn programming is it teaches you how to break down a problem and think logically about things. So think of a problem that you recently had um, and think about how you addressed it. So did you break down the problem piece by piece? Maybe you, you, the problem wasn't solved in the end. Maybe you pushed it to the side and, and left it to a later time. Programming is going to help you think logically. It's going to help you think critically. So it's going to help you break down things and tackle them um, in smaller chunks rather than addressing the situation as a whole. So when us programmers get a task or a challenge or a job, um, we, we don't just hop on and start writing the code straight away. No, we look at the problem, we assess it, we um, break it down into pieces that are more manageable. So for example, if we had to build a website such as Amazon, what, a smaller version of Amazon. So we've got products, we've got orders, we've got customers, we've got a lot of different areas to develop. If I was to just start writing code for that, you're gonna be all over the place. So you can't, you can't take that approach. And that's the approach that a lot of people take to everyday problems. So the way you do it with programming is you break that up. So you're gonna have customers on one side, you're gonna have products on the other side, uh, link the two with a relational database, um, then you're going to have some front-end development, so you're going to have the way the 
products are going to be listed on the screen how the web page is going to look um, you're going to have the back end so how do we hook up that that nice looking front page to the database in the back then how do we get the orders processed and all of these different pieces so you can see by breaking it down we can then start coding it in a more manageable way number two programming makes things easier for you so let's think about a simple computer program so let's say you have a hundred documents and each one is an excel file for example and you need to add up columns one two and three and then get the average of each so you can use formulas in excel right well you can but then there's a hundred files so how can we do that without sitting there tediously going through each file and then it, you can see where I'm going with this so a way of going around this is you can actually write a program that will do this instantly it'll go through every single file and it'll do all that hard work for you so programming can make troubling and tedious tasks become very simple and it can help you achieve a lot of things which you didn't think were possible so the third thing is that programming teaches you persistence so how many times have we run into a problem and let's be honest we say i'm done i quit there's no solution i can't i can't be bothered or you move on to something else because you think oh no i can't fix this well programming is going to start teaching you to think in light of finding a solution so what programming taught me is um, patience so when you're trying to write a program um, a lot of the times it's, it's a misconception that people think that okay you're going to write a program and you're going to write a thousand lines of code and it's all going to work actually in most cases sometimes you, you may be writing only 50 to 100 lines of code or something small like that but it's taking you trial and error and trying again and again and not giving up to get that little piece of code working and then when it works it feels it feels fantastic so the point is programming is going to get you thinking logically it's going to get you um, to stop giving up on everyday things so just like you didn't give up on that program you're not going to give up on everyday tasks uh, you're going to start thinking about how to break things down how to troubleshoot how to think about problems in a different sort of light so before we get started Steve Jobs once said every person in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think so on that note let's get straight into it the first question we need to ask is what language are we going to start with there's so many programming languages out there Sonny which one do I use you've got C++ you've got Java you've got Python you've got Swift which is Apple's new language you've got Ruby you've got HTML CSS blah 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 it just sounds like a bunch of gibberish but not to worry there's a lot of easy languages also to begin with and when I say easy don't get that confused with not powerful these languages may be um, less hard to understand but you can just be as powerful with them for example Python Python is a very easy language to pick up and learn but it can be extremely powerful by writing a small amount of code C++ on the other hand is a much more complicated language um, it's much more in-depth sort of uh, you have to make sure all the syntax is correctly written but again it has its uses for the purpose of these tutorials I'm going to be teaching you guys Java so Java I feel is a language right in the middle somewhere so it's going to be just right to kind of get you guys thinking about how programming is and the main concepts of programming and object oriented programming and things like that and I'll be able to explain to you guys the fundamentals um, the reason I'm choosing Java is because I learned Java as my first language and I read a book and I pretty much taught myself Java um, and I really believe that you guys could learn it just as easy as that but obviously not everyone likes to read so I'm going to make it interactive I'm going to make it fun we're gonna have a few code challenges and hopefully you guys can get engaged and you guys can talk to me and we can get this going literally it's going to be walkthrough tutorials that you guys can walk through side by side with me you're going to see everything that I'm doing and hopefully at the end of it you'll be able to write a program of your own so let's get started Right, so the first thing you, that you're going to want to do is install a IDE. Now an IDE is an integrated development environment and what this does is it's an environment where you can write code basically and it provides loads of different features and facilities which help you do that. Everyone uses an IDE, it's not a case of oh I'm, I'm new so I'm using an IDE, nope. Everyone uses an IDE and um, the one that we're going to be using is Eclipse 
and Eclipse is a well-known IDE. You can also run Python and things like that in Eclipse. You can also do web development in Eclipse. Eclipse has a really good set of features. Uh, it allows. It also has code completion. So instead of writing out the same bit of code again and again and again, it's actually going to provide you with useful little suggestions, which is going to fill that code up. For example, if you have a loop, rather than writing the loop structure again and again and again, which could take a bit of time writing out manually, um, you're just going to have to write the keyword and then press enter and it's going to fill the body for you. So it's going to save you tons of time like that. And it's also going to help you uh, identify where your mistakes are in code. So in Java, at the end of every line, you're going to have to put a semicolon and you will not believe how many times during the learning process, people forget that semicolon. So uh, uh, using an IDE like Eclipse is going to help you fix those small issues and those teething issues, you could call them. So jumping straight into it, what we're going to do is open up Chrome or Safari, whatever is your favorite browser. Then you want to go to the top uh, search bar and type in Eclipse. And then you see Eclipse downloads, click that. And then it's one of the first links. So as you can see, get Eclipse Oxygen. And you want to click download. And what that will do is I'll take you here. Click download. So I'm doing it for a Mac. However, it's the, it pretty much the exact same sort of installation process for Windows. So you're going to follow the same steps as I'm doing right now. So once that's downloaded, click show in Finder. Double click on the download file. And you'll see Eclipse Installer. So you want to click and click open. Let that start loading up. Right, and then you've got a choice of options here. So you've got JavaScript, web developers, PHP. Like I said, you can do this for more than languages than just Java. Um, but what, what we're gonna focus on is just purely Java development. So the top one, Eclipse IDE for Java developers, you're gonna give that a click. And then choose your directory. It should be fine, the one that's, uh, that's set by default. Click install. So I'll be right back once it's finished. Right, so once that's done, you wanna click on launch. You can close down Chrome and it's going to pop up asking what workspace. Now your workspace is going to be where all your files and all your projects are stored. So by default, leave that as it is and click launch. Right now you're going to be prompted with the opening page. So what you want to do is you already have a few tutorials and a few options here, but we're going to start a new Java project from scratch. So click create a new Java project. So for the project name, we're gonna call it My First Project. And then you're gonna click Finish. And you can make this full screen if you'd like. So here is Eclipse. So we'll slowly get to terms with what each of the sections are. So we have the Package Explorer on the left. So if we click this little downwards arrow and we click Source, this is where all the code's gonna be stored. So don't worry too much about JRE system library yet. We're going to get into that stuff later on down the line. For now, all you need to know is the basics and the fundamentals. So to get started, we're going to click on File and click New and click Class. And then what we want to do is call this Hello World. So it's good programming practice to start classes with a capital letter and then for every word where you would usually have a space, you don't have a space, but instead you have another capital letter. And that's called camel casing and you definitely wanna start getting used to writing um, your code like that. But only for classes you start with a capital letter. So keep that in mind for later on. Um, so for this tutorial, as we're doing a our first class, you wanna tick the main method box and I'll explain that in a later date, but for now, just click Finish. And you have your first code template. So here you can see it's generated the class Hello World. And you have this method, so it's a function here, um, called main. And main is actually the first method that is run when the program is run. So uh, when we click Run, so when we click up here on this Run symbol, um, it's going to run our Java program and the first place it's going to go to is wherever the main function is. So in this case, it's going to go to hello world.java and then to the main method here. So don't worry if things aren't making sense, just to get us introduced into the Java environment and things like that. So what you want to do is write system, so capital S, system dot out 
dot print ln and then open and close brackets and then end that line with a semicolon what this line does is it prints out a statement on the screen so in this case it's going to print out what's inside the parentheses so what you want to do is have double air quotes and you want to put inside hello world like so so once you've done that simply go up to the top and click run and it should say save and launch let resources to save because you need to save the file before you compile and run it you want to click ok and as you can see we just made our first program so it says hello world now if we want to make it say hello our name uh, how are we going to do that so pause the video give yourself a quick minute see if you can make it say hello sunny hello whatever your name is and then resume the video and see if you've done it right so system dot print line and then you want to change in order to get your name to print in the very simple case just just because we're starting off you're going to change where world would be just to your name and then rerun the program save hello sunny if you don't want to keep getting that pop-up box each time um, let's make a little change and well, next time you click run click always save resources before launching it's a safe option it's not going to do any harm then click ok so that's going to stop that little pop-up box from coming every time so that's your first program successfully read so you've installed Eclipse which is an IDE an integrated development environment to write a program which is called hello world and it's going to print out hello world or hello your name to the screen so don't worry if it seems all simple right now we're going to get more in depth as the videos go on and soon you're going to be challenged soon it's going to be a bit interesting to see how you're going to solve the tasks that i'm going to throw at you but don't worry it's going to be a lot of fun if you enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe and also be sure to turn on your notifications which is the little bell icon in the corner um, so that you get notified every time i release a new video um, hope you enjoyed it till next time i came from nothing never had a lot this one is for the have-nots I just wanted to drop the top And pull up on that 616 with the ass shots Ooh,